Shall we begin? There are only yes, you should. Yeah, there are only twenty-seven students here. I don't. Know, last time we, on the last class, we were around. Uh, you were around sixty something, right? Is Daniel's team here? Hello, hello. Uh, okay. Thank you uh, for coming. Today we'll cover uh, the very first uh, chapter, which is entitled Introduction to Advanced Database Systems. So, as we have already discussed in our uh, previous class, uh, the very first class, we discussed about uh, the different aspects of advanced database systems and in this chapter specifically I'll be talking about the distributed database systems per, uh, uh, aspect of you know this course advanced database systems uh, I'll talk about different uh, architectures related to distributed database uh, systems so specifically I'll be talking about uh, the the meaning or uh, the even the essence behind distributed database management systems okay then i'll talk about a bit about history um, distributed database management system promises uh, and also there are issues or complications related to distributed database systems i will brief you with that and uh, finally i'll talk about the architecture of distributed database management systems because there are different varieties of distribution so uh, again it's true from the database uh, system or database management systems perspective so i will discuss uh, all of these uh, five main topics under uh, the first chapter which is introduction to advanced database systems but it would be great uh, to start our discussion by defining uh, distributed computing so distributed computing uh, is uh, commonly you know uh, defined by a number of autonomous processing elements okay so the the main uh, component while defining distributed computing uh, are those nodes or we call them processing elements and these processing elements could be uh, semi autonomous or uh, fully autonomous but we can say distributed computing is uh, a computing performed uh, 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 with uh, autonomous processing elements. So here we do have uh, uh, like uh, the concept of popularity because we are not talking about a single machine, we are talking about multiple machines, elements, processing elements. And here also we are giving much emphasis for being uh, I mean, uh, the, 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 the uh, phenomena of being autonomous, okay? The second thing is networking. So, distributed computing is defined as uh, a number of, you know, defined with uh, a number of autonomous processing elements which are interconnected by a computer network and finally, that cooperate in performing their assigned tasks. So, the different processing elements might have uh, a common goal and for that they have to network, they have to uh, cooperate uh, and that cooperation man manifests through uh, computer networks and the nature of those processing elements is either semi-autonomous or fully autonomous but when we say distributed computing is uh, you know a science uh, you know that studies how uh, dispersed or distributed uh, network elements or uh, processing elements cooperate or collaborate then we have to define uh, uh, what what what's being distributed uh, in the first place okay so for that purpose uh, we would say uh, things or uh, entities that are subject for distribution in distributed computing are the first thing the processing logic uh, and again function we do have uh, uh, another uh, method to distribute data and control. So these four major things are subject to distribution in distributed computing or in any distributed 
system. Okay, that means a distributor system could be distributing the processing logic, it could be distributing the control, or it could even be distributing data. So when a distributed computing system uh, uh, emphasizes more on distributing data rather than control, then we can say that distributed computing is a type of distributed database uh, uh, system. Okay, it's, a, it's distributed database system, but not necessarily, by the way. There are also some classifications of distributed uh, data systems in general. So one of them is distributed database system. The other one, you know, there could be even distributed file system. So for that purpose, we say one, one of the parts of distributed computing uh, in which we uh, distribute or uh, allocate different data entities into different nodes in, in a given network. Uh, is called distributed database system. I will further more on this topic later, but for now, it's better to take away these keynotes. Like the first one, distributed computing is characterized by uh, various, uh, at least more than one processing elements, and they are interconnected uh, using a computer network, and then they have a common task or uh, common goal. And uh, the things that are subject to uh, distribution are controlled to processing logic. So the geographical, uh, uh, you know, visualization of distributed data centers uh, looks like this one. So each center will have its own data processing logic function or control, and all of these data centers or nodes are connected uh, uh, using a computer network. So this is intercontinental. Uh, distribution basically but it's a very high level distribution uh, or distributed computing uh, system or environment in general then let's dive more into the meaning of distributed database system now so distributed uh, uh, database system is a specific form of distributed computing in general or distributed systems in general so when we say distributed database system it's a collection of multiple that means the concept of this popularity uh, here, processing elements, comes uh, to this one too. Then they are logically interrelated. So there is a connection, then there is a relation between uh, different elements or these multiple database components. And that, that connection or interrelation is logical. Uh, and then uh, this logical interrelation, interrelation manifests over a computer network, okay? So a distributed database basically is uh, a collection of multiple databases which are distributed over a computer network and are logically interrelated. So when you come to the da database management system software, the software part, it's a software that manages distributed databases. So we say the distributed database is a collection of uh, multiple database, databases distributed over the network and which are interrelated. Then the software that, uh, that is used to manage this distribution is called uh, distribute, distributed database management system. So this distributed database management system uh, provides one very important thing in a distributed database environment, which is called transparency. So when we say transparency, it doesn't, we, we are not referring to, you know, the, the type of transparency we have been learning in the civics and ethical education uh, uh, course or in that domain. When we say transparency, it's uh, more to hiding the implementation details of uh, some system and making the system more readable, more usable, more user friendly to the users. Okay, so the component in a distributed database system that makes uh, the database transparent to uh, the users and specifically the distribution even, the, the fact that the uh, databases are distributed over the network is uh, hidden from the uh, end users and that is enabled by uh, a component called uh, or you know a software called distributed database management system software. So this, the main takeaway from this topic is transparency, okay? Transparency, that means uh, we do have a distribution of data 
and uh, a, a, an environment, a system that uh, is dedicated to distribute data in a computer network is called a distributed database system. The software that is, uh, uh, you know, there to manage this distribution is called a distributed database management system. And the software, uh, this distributed database management system, its main task is uh, achieving transparency. That means hiding the distribution details, hiding the implementation details of a given database system, a given distributed database systems, and making the distributed database system more usable to the users, more easy to use to the users. Okay. So that being said about what distributed uh, database is, what distributed computing is, how we could use uh, distributed database management systems to um, achieve transparency to the end user so that end users could use a distributed, very dispersed database management system or just a database system in general, uh, the same way uh, we use a centralized database management system. Uh, now, uh, we try to distinguish uh, computing systems which are not really uh, uh, distributed. For instance, a time-sharing computer system is not a distributed database system. So in a time-sharing computer system, usually we do have one computer and uh, there is this timestamp-based ordering technique in which one user uh, utilizes uh, the, the infrastructure in a given computer system after another user. So there is no concept of simultaneous use, but users uh, utilize the computational power, the memory and everything in that system in a time series manner, okay? in a sequential manner. That's called a time-sharing computer system. And distributed database system is not about uh, time-sharing you a single computer system. So time-sharing computer system is not distributed database system. The other one is a loosely or tightly coupled multiprocessor system. Again, a given system, a given computing system with multiple processors can not even be co considered as a distributed database system. There is one main reason for that, by the way. That is the concept of networking. That's the concept of uh, uh, logical interrelation. So since that aspect of computing is not in these two uh, types of uh, computing systems, we cannot call this one as a distributed database system or even a distributed system. The other thing, even specific to database system, uh, we cannot say a database system which uh, resides at one of the nodes of a network of computers, which is a centralized database uh, system, it cannot be uh, referred to as distributed database system. So the concept behind this is, you know, <coughs> when we talk about uh, distribution and specifically distributing data, we are not referring to uh, a computing systems uh, that utilize multiple processors or a computing system that allows uh, users to use its infrastructure, computing power in a sequential manner. And even it's not about, we are not talking about a system or a database system that resides in one node in a given network environment and can only be used from uh, that node. So this, these are not the types of distributed database uh, systems. So what, what really is distributed database management system environment or what does uh, it look like at least? So um, in general, for instance, as an example, this can be referred to as a distributed database uh, system or a distributed database management system in which there is a central component which provides uh, transparency uh, or which provides interrelation or relation which is called the network we do have different nodes uh, distributed over the network for instance one is in Paris uh, the other one is in Boston the other one is in San Francisco and uh, alike so uh, as you can see from this slide each division each node which is distributed over the network and connected with each other through a, a communication network has its own data and also has some shared or replicated data. For instance, if you can see here from the Boston side, Boston uh, database management system holds or helps to manage data 
which is related to Boston employees, which is specific to Boston employees, Paris employees, and Boston projects. But when we come to, for instance, San Francisco, the San Francisco server holds uh, San Francisco employees and San Francisco projects. So you cannot find Paris employees uh, and Boston projects and Boston employees in San Francisco database. Okay. So if you, in general, if your database management system environment or if your uh, database environment in general is uh, can can be categorized with this type of uh, node distribution, like there is a network, there is semi-autonomous or fully autonomous nodes. And each of those nodes might have their own corresponding uh, database. By the way, database and database management system are two different things. So database management system could be here in Paris, and uh, the data could be somewhere else. Okay. So if if there is such kind of uh, distribution in your computing environment, then we can we can refer to that. Uh, you know, database management system environment as a distributed database management system environment. We will further on this topic later, but for now, it's better to think uh, two uh, important things. The first one is uh, distribution uh, and the concept of generalization and specialization in which uh, some components are, uh, uh, some components hold unique data and some other hold common data, which is replicated over all the nodes in the network. So that's one thing, distribution. The second one is uh, the uh, you know the cornerstone for this distribution, which is called communication network. So this characterizes distributed database management system uh, environment. Uh, so what are the implicit assumptions when we talk about uh, distributed database management system or distributed database environment in general? The first one is regarding uh, the uh, uh, allocation of data. So data are stored at a number of sites. So in this case, each site logically consists of a single processor. So uh, that's the first assumption in distributed environment. So it doesn't mean every site or every node in a network uh, will have uh, its own corresponding data, but you know, it, this means generally data is distributed over the network and placed on you know different various nodes which are more than one. So there is a concept of replication and there is a concept of distribution. So but at least from the computing perspective, each node, each site will have a single processor at least. That's the first assumption when we talk about distributed database systems. The other one is the concept of networking. So uh, the processors at each site are interconnected by a computer network. Again, we already discussed this one, but we're not talking about a multiprocessor system or even, you know, uh, we, we are not even talking about parallel database systems, which are a little bit different from uh, distributed database systems. I'll talk about that one later. But when we say distributed database uh, system, we uh, are referring to a system in which processors are uh, connected or interrelated by a computer network. And as we already said, each site will have a single processor and also it might have uh, some data. Okay. Uh, the third one is, uh, you know, uh, regarding the definition of uh, uh, distributed database. It's uh, referred to us as a database and it's not a collection of files. But it's a, a, a collection of databases in which data is logically related. Um, as we have, uh, you know, as we have seen in the previous uh, diagram. So concluding this slide with the uh, uh, definition of uh, uh, distributed database management system, uh, in which we refer uh, to distributed database management system as a full-fledged uh, database management system. That means it's not a transaction processing system or it's not a remote file system, but it's a, a database management system in which there are multiple distributed, replicated, and interrelated with the network uh, nodes or uh, components, computing components. That's how we define distributed database systems. So we have been discussing about uh, how distributed database system contains components or nodes which are 
logically uh, interrelated or logically uh, integrated. So let's let's uh, give much emphasis for this concept. It looks like contradictory, but it's better to take some, uh, you know, it's better to contemplate on this topic for now. There is this concept called logically integrated, and but we also say it's physically distributed. So there should be some component to make physically distributed components or sites to in, to be integrated, to be uh, you know related logically. So, in fact, we know any distributed system will have physically distributed computing nodes, physically distributed uh, database nodes. But the key or the component that lets us to integrate those physically distributed components uh, is called, the first one is called networking, okay? And the concept behind it is called transparency, as we already said, and it's uh, enabled by uh, the entity called or software called database management system in case of uh, that database okay database distribution so it's better to take a note on this uh, you know this concept of uh, uh, you know this concept that looks like uh, contradictory but uh, that can go hand in hand like how how come physically distributed components be logically integrated. So this is more to a logical uh, realm talk, or uh, this is more about making something physically uh, distributed look at look like uh, it's uh, uh, physically in the same place. And that concept is called transparency, and it's enabled by the uh, database management uh, system. The second uh, topic here is about the history behind distributed database management system, which obviously starts from uh, file system. So as you already know, uh, during the file system era, you know, there, there is a program. The program will have its own metadata or directory or data description. And each program is dedicated for some kind of specific file. So that file can only be manipulated by that specific program. So that's problematic. Um, system uh, and uh, we still use this system for some uh, requirements you know uh, dominantly but that's where uh, any type of database systems uh, start or the concept or the conception of this file management data management then integrity came from the origin which is called file system so that's where we started everything then from there we came up with uh, database uh, management concept, the concept of database management. Here, the most important part here is integrity or interrelation between uh, data uh, components. So here we have uh, a directory, uh, a central directory and a central database, but various, uh, various programs with a specific goal. So those various programs with specific goals access a centralized data description or directory server in order to you know uh, access the database so this is a typical database management uh, uh, architecture or database architecture in which there is a, uh, a directory and then a database and uh, uh, a user who wants to access the database has to pass through the directory that's one thing uh, this is a little bit improvement from uh, the file system because here in the file system each program is dedicated to each file and this program cannot uh, access other files unless it is rewritten for those files but here we came up with this centralized component called directory which every program can access whatever data it wants which is subject to authorization and authentication so early stage distribution, we came up with this peer-to-peer -peer, uh, distribution of data in which uh, uh, the uh, nodes in over the network which are distributed, uh, this, this is the first true distribution network, by the way, or architecture, I would say. So this was centralized. Most of the time, this, this architecture was centralized. It's an early concept of database management. But when you come to this peer-to-peer -peer, uh, uh, architecture, which is an advancement to uh, uh, the database uh, management concepts, the existing database management concepts, in which each node has 
either semi uh, uh, like uh, partial autonomy or full autonomy over its own data okay what does it mean for instance in this case if boston uh, the site in boston is uh, uh, like fully autonomous then it's able to decide which data to share and which to uh, 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 preserve okay so that's how we characterize peer-to-peer -peer, uh, architectures, both for computing and uh, data, by the way. Then we have, it's not actually an improvement to, uh, uh, like an evolutionary improvement to uh, the peer-to-peer -peer architecture, but you know, it's more organized form of uh, networked distribution of data in which, again, there is a central network there are dedicated database servers, we call them instances, and those instances has, uh, have uh, uh, their own corresponding databases. So this is usually referred to as a client-server architecture. So here we do have either a push-only or a pull-only uh, communication mode in which either the client requests some data, which is pull-only, or the server provides uh, or pushes some kind of notifications or periodic uh, data to the client. So this is the typical architecture, the most dominant architecture, the most popular architecture that has been used uh, in the realm of uh, computing. So here we have, again, uh, an advancement to the client-server architecture, the peer-to-peer -peer architecture, which is, which is called multi-database system architecture. Sometimes uh, people call it federated architecture. Okay, so uh, here we do have a layer, very logical layer, uh, that uh, you know that serves as a middleware between different component database management systems and various users. So we call this one multi uh, uh, database system. The most important uh, contribution we came up with with this with this architecture is data integration. We were able to integrate various, you know, datas as one and serve it to the user, whoever the user is. Here, for instance, the data is, you know, it's it's kind of transparent because there is a middleware called uh, network, but the client would know where the data is. For instance, if the client wants to access this data, uh, yeah, it's Boston. Uh, Boston projects, Boston employees, Boston assignments, the Boston employees, because Boston employees table uh, or the part of employees table, which is dedicated for Boston employees, is again fragmented by the criteria called, uh, uh, you know, location is equal to Boston, and again replicated over the network, copied over the network. That's one fact from this one. Uh, again, for instance, Boston projects here is again replicated to New York. Um, yeah, and again, uh, if you go to uh, yeah, New York, New York projects for listed here or fragmented here and placed here in New York. But from there, uh, the Montreal site holds a horizontal fragmentation of this data by a criteria or a predicate called budget greater than 200,000, okay? So this is the fact, like on the ground, we do have uh, 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 tables like uh, Boston projects, Boston employees, Boston assignments, uh, the same is true for New York, Montreal, Paris, and Tokyo. Uh, even, for instance, in the case of Tokyo, Tokyo doesn't have any database, right? It's there only with database management system, just to access other sites with database. So this basically characterizes uh, what distributed database is. But the communication network here in the middle defines what transparency is. The way we see this whole data is like this. We, as a user, we see there is employee table, assignment table, project table, and pay table. But internally, the implementation detail might look like this one and we use database management systems to provide this transparency over this communication uh, network or distributed environment. So that's what we call distributed uh, 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 
uh, add data access in distributed database environment. Look, for instance, here we do have an application. We call these applications, okay? These are sent from usually the user or other application. So here we have a query, for instance, a SQL query that projects employee name and salary from three tables, from employee, salary, and, uh, sorry, employee, assignment, and pay. With this condition, the first condition is uh, uh, a condition that checks whether duration of the project is, or the employee maybe, it's, it's for the assignment. So the first condition checks whether the duration of the assignment is greater than 12 or not. And the second one is called a join condition, an equi join condition, in which that correlates data from the employee table with the assignment table and data from uh, the uh, pay table to the employee table. So if you issue this query in a distributed database environment, in fact, it has to decompose this query into uh, in a way that suits this distribution, right? But the component that does that is called database management system or distributed database management system. So because of this distributed database management system, you don't really have to decompose this one manually or even by using any third party tool, but the distributed database management system decomposes this query into you know, different subqueries so that each subquery goes to the corresponding site uh, and access the required data. So the view we have, the user view, uh, when we see a distributed database system is like this. We assume the distributed database, the components uh, uh, in a distributed database environment uh, are like, you know, these different colored nodes. Uh, I sum up. Oh, okay, I think. Wait, I need a battery. After this, I have a lot of damage now. Let me plug it. Someone. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, uh, so this is it. You know, uh, uh, transparency, and because of the the, the possibilities of uh, the database environment, which looks like this one, centralized one. It looks like for the use, uh, we we already said is again location transparency since we are hiding where data is located okay fragmentation transparency replication transparency overall data independence is their uh, overall or ultimate goal uh, it's better to leave it uh, uh, that way uh, we we have been discussing about reliability right one of the premises of uh, uh, the second promise of uh, distributed database management systems is reliability. The first one were transparency. We discussed about that one. But from the reliability perspective, uh, replication is there. So by using replication, distributed database management systems uh, achieve or enable uh, reliability. Okay. So uh, in this case, for instance, distributed transactions are there. Uh, Distributed transactions, we have been talking about them uh, before. They provide concurrency transparency. That's the first thing. Uh, that means they allow concurrent access of data, even though that same data item is being accessed by other users, multiple users. The second one is failure atomicity, which is the, the, the most important behavior of uh, distributed transaction management softwares. Uh, or database management softwares in a distributed environment, especially in relational database context, in which transactions that are towards the same goal shall commit if all 
subsections or all instructions inside that transaction is successful otherwise uh, the whole transaction shall fail that's a principle and uh, it refers to that as failure atomicity by the way uh, we used to call atom is indivisible right so that's why we refer to uh, indivisibility concepts by atomicity but these days we know atom is divisible so don't get confused so the other one is uh, uh, the the uh, the, the support of distributed transaction for distributed concurrency control protocols and commit protocols, which concurrently, right? That's what we uh, call intra-query parallelism. Decomposing a single query to different sub-queries, and each of those sub-queries uh, refers to a given site which holds the required data, and then running all of those decomposed queries at one time is called intra-query parallelism. This is the most interesting uh, contribution or uh, promise uh, of uh, distributed database management systems, and it really improves uh, the performance of uh, the database management systems, parallelly executing queries. The first one is placing the data allocation, the concept of allocation, the concept of load balancing, you know, placing some uh, data to their point of use. For instance, if uh, uh, there is a database called Ethiopian Universities, then all data related to Addis Ababa University should be placed, you know, in Addis Ababa. All the data related to American College of Technology should be placed in, in Addis Ababa, which is, you know, relatively uh, in high degree of proximity to where the users of that database are. So that's that's the two things that improves performance in distributed database management system. The first one, data proximity. The second one, parallel execution of uh, queries. The other one is scalability. Uh, so um, scalability, you know, we can define scalability or discuss scalability from various perspectives. Uh, you know, it could be uh, scale out like uh, adding more servers in a server grid or in server farm and uh, enhancing the performance, the capacity of your distributed database environment. That's one way of scalability. The second one could be scaling up. That means increasing the memory capacity, the computing capacity of uh, your single server, your servers. Like if you have 10 servers, if you are increasing the capacity of each of those servers, it, we call it scale up. The other one is scale out. So, but in general, we, we could be, we could scale our uh, distributed database environment um, uh, from the processing perspective, from the computing power perspective, or from the memory, disk, or storage perspective, okay? But in general, distributed database management systems provide a very easy way to scale uh, your uh, computing or uh, database environment. But uh, not only promises, but there are uh, you know, complications of distribution. Now let's talk about the issues that come along with uh, the distribution in general. So these issues, we can refer to them uh, as design issues. So the first one, uh, for instance, is distributed database design. For instance, ask yourself the following questions, like, how to distribute the database, okay? Here, you know, there is a concept of uh, proximity to its point of use, the capacity of sites, the memory capacity, the processing capacity of sites, the type of user queries, applications. There are many things you should consider, right? So this is one big issue uh, that, that hampers the implementation of distributed database systems, especially in relational database system environments. So the first is how to distribute the database. It could be you know, replicated or non-replicated, fragmented or non-fragmented. You know, the whole like full copy uh, replication or fragment replication. So these are questions you should ask while trying to design distributed databases. So these are main issues, main complications that come along with uh, distributed database systems. The other one is distributed query processing. 
uh, once you design your distributed database, then you will have data replicated over the network, data fragmented over the network, right? So uh, you need to care about the query or the, the, the software, like the, the, the script that uh, is supposed to access all those replicated dispersed data, right? So in that, that perspective is referred to as, or is categorized under the topic distributed query processing, okay? For instance, convert user transactions to data manipulation instructions. So there is this concept. We'll talk about that one. We'll, 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 we'll see the theory and the, pra the, 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 the practice uh, behind this one. Like you have to, you have to have some kind of relational calculus. You have to change the relational calculus to relational algebra. Then the relational algebra should be optimized in a way it is you know, efficiently decomposed and distributed over the network. So there is also, again, beyond this distribution, there is a concept of optimization. So when we, call, when we talk about optimization, uh, you know, we, ref, we are referring uh, directly to the cost of data access, cost of data transmission, and cost of computation, right? So there are different cost computation uh, methods. Uh, we'll talk about this one, the, this one's uh, in our next classes. But in general, uh, distributed query processing is an NP-hard uh, problem. So NP-hard means non-polynomial hard problem. It's type of among the types of uh, the hardest computer science or computational or mathematical, you know, problem. So it's very hard problem, but there there is you know, a tolerable degree of uh, solutions. We'll talk about that, that one uh, later because this is mainly you know the concept of load balancing. Data allocation, computation allocation, uh, yeah. So, like server scoring, different things. I I I I, uh, I conducted my master's degree. I think it's before ten years. I guess is it? Uh, it's in two thousand thirteen. I guess. Yeah, it's in two thousand like ten eleven years ago. I I I. Uh, I wrote this uh, load balancing. Uh, Cloud scheduler, so which, uh, which which was used to as a, a scheduling component of some cloud computing uh, uh, sector or vendor. But you know, one thing I can tell you about this distributed query processing is it's a very complex task. It's even a task beyond scheduling. You know, scheduling is a very complex task by itself, but. Query processing in a distributed environment is, especially if you consider the, 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 the uh, concept of optimization, it's a very uh, complex problem. But we'll see some theories behind uh, um, addressing these problems. Um, the other one uh, is distributed concurrency control. Uh, so here in distributed environment, you are going to have multiple uh, Databases with the same data, and you are going to have multiple users who might want to access the same data item at a time. Okay, so how do you co synchronize concurrent access of data? You shouldn't like you are not supposed to say, for instance, as a database management system, as a distributed database management system, stop X user is using this data, so you shouldn't you shouldn't touch it. You should, that's that's not the promise of a distributed database management system. Distributed database management system promises concurrency, data uh, access concurrency, computation concurrency. So for that purpose, achieving that concurrency is a big issue, okay, in the realm of distributed database management system. So that's one thing you should consider, like deadlock management, for instance, okay? Achieving consistency in replicated uh, uh, data in, in, in an environment where there are uh, replicated data. That's also another problem. The other one is reliability. How do you make your system resilient to uh, failures? Because, uh, for instance, if you put your data item in two locations, in two sites, for instance, there is high degree of probability you might lose two, both of these uh, replicated data items at some point in time, okay? So, you know, in distributed database management system, you have to also care about the resilience of your uh, system in general. This is achieved, one, 
by implementing uh, a very good uh, distributed environment in which data is replicated as much as possible. The second one, by implementing distributed query processing techniques, which are really uh, robust enough to access alternative data sources whenever the target data source is down. And also there is a concept of atomicity and uh, uh, durability. So uh, these are the issues of uh, distributed database management system, like replication. For instance, from the replication perspective, there is this concept called mutual consistency, uh, freshness of copies, eager versus lazy uh, uh, synchronization, centralized versus distributed replication. So these these are again issues. Like we can consider this these ones as uh, topics you should care about while uh, implementing or working on a distributed database environment. Okay. For instance, copies should be fresh always. So there is no concept, or you shouldn't be trying to use batch processes that run once a day to synchronize uh, differences between data items or uh, sites. So if you have a principle to achieve freshness of copies, high degree of freshness of copies of data or replicated data, then the issue will, uh, will be large. So you should care about that one too. If that is also similar to the eager way of uh, synchronizing your data, we call it eager mechanism, that which is uh, a way you uh, synchronously you know, uh, propagate updates to all replicas in a given environment. There is also lazy uh, update mechanism or synchronization mechanism in which you synchronize uh, uh, data or updates in one site uh, in asynchronous manner, okay? Not in real time. The other one is parallel database management systems. Uh, these are different from distributed database management systems, but you should also care about parallel database management systems while working with distributed database management systems. This is basically, there is no concept of a geographically distributed, uh, uh, you know, uh, databases. But this is more to having multiple uh, database management systems that run parallelly. And uh, this mainly aligns with the concept of cluster computing. Okay? So this has high scalability and performance, but it might also have its own, uh, its own you know, from the performance perspective and scalability perspective. This is good. At least there is no communication latency or uh, complications related to network. But availability might be uh, one issue, single point of failure might be another issue, so this is it. Uh, so another issue you should care about like is uh, you know, alternative distribution approach like modern peer-to-peer, -peer, World Wide Web and other uh, techniques, uh, big data processing techniques, for instance MapReduce and Spark, you'll, you'll be working on this uh, as a seminar. NoSQL, NewSQL, Polystores. For instance, in my current project, I have been using Polystores um, and some other NoSQL database systems, okay, like DynamoDB, Cassandra, and MongoDB. So graph analytics techniques, uh, all up uh, kind of uh, techniques. You should you should care about this one as a big data processing techniques, uh, and these all are important if you are dealing with distributed database management systems because distributed database management systems in the first slide are characterized by heterogeneous not necessarily heterogeneous but you know usually they are heterogeneous that means there are different database management systems in this in the same distributed database management system there there might be mongodb neo4j cassandra dynamodb polystore different data sources okay so for that purpose, it's better to like this one, centralized one. Looks like for the use, uh, we, we already said is again location transparency since we are hiding where data is located. Okay, fragmentation transparency, replication transparency, overall data independence is their uh, overall or ultimate goal. Uh, it's better to leave it uh, uh, that way. Uh, we, we have been discussing about reliability, right? One of the premises of uh, uh, 
The second promise of uh, distributed database management systems is reliability. The first one were transparency. We discussed about that one. But from the reliability perspective, uh, replication is there. So by using replication, distributed database management systems uh, achieve or enable uh, reliability, okay? So uh, in this case, for instance, distributed transactions are there. Uh, distributed transactions, we have been talking about them uh, before. They provide concurrency transparency. That's the first thing. Uh, that means they allow concurrent access of data even though that same data item is being accessed by other users, multiple users. The second one is failure atomicity, which is the, the, the most important behavior of uh, distributed transaction management softwares uh, or database management softwares in a distributed environment, especially in relational database context, in which transactions that are towards the same goal shall commit if all uh, subsections or all instructions inside that transaction co is successful otherwise uh, the whole transaction shall fail that's a principle and uh, it refers to that as failure atomicity by the way uh, we used to call atom is indivisible right so that's why we refer to uh, indivisibility concepts by atomicity but these days we know atom is divisible so don't get confused so the other one is uh, uh, the, the, uh, the, the support of distributed transaction for distributed concurrency control protocols and commit protocols, which is concurrently, right? That's what we uh, call intra-query parallelism. Decomposing a single query to different sub-queries, and each of those sub-queries uh, refers to a given site which holds the required data and then running all of those decomposed queries at one time is called intra-query parallelism. This is the most interesting uh, contribution or uh, promise uh, of uh, distributed database management systems and it really improves uh, the performance of uh, the database management systems parallelly executing queries. The first one is placing the data, allocation, the concept of allocation, the concept of load balancing, you know, placing some uh, data to their point of use. For instance, if uh, uh, there is a database called Ethiopian Universities, then all data related to Addis Ababa University should be placed, you know, in Addis Ababa. All the data related to American College of Technology should be placed in, in Addis Ababa, which is, you know, relatively in high degree of proximity to where the users of that database are. So that's that's the two things that improves performance in distributed database management system. The first one, data proximity. The second one, parallel execution of uh, queries. The other one is scalability. Uh, so um, scalability, you know, we can define scalability or discuss scalability from various perspectives, uh, you know, it could be uh, scale out, like uh, you know, adding more servers in a server grid or in server farm, and uh, enhancing the performance, the capacity of your distributed database environment. That's one way of scalability. The second one could be scaling up. That means increasing the memory capacity, the computing capacity of uh, your single server, your servers. Like if you have ten servers. If you are increasing the capacity of each of those servers, it, we call it scale up. The other one is scale out. So, but in general, we we could be we could scale our uh, distributed database environment um, uh, from the processing perspective, from the computing power perspective, or from the memory, disk, or storage perspective. Okay, but in general, distributed database management systems provide a very easy way to scale. Uh, your uh, computing or uh, database environment. But uh, not only promises, but there are, uh, you know, complications of distribution. Now let's talk about the issues that come along with uh, the distribution in general. So these issues, we can refer to them uh, as design issues. 
So the first one, uh, for instance, is distributed database design. For instance, ask yourself the following questions, like how to distribute the database. Okay, here you know there is a concept of uh, proximity to its point of use, the capacity of sites, the memory capacity, the processing capacity of sites, the type of user queries, applications. There are many things you should consider, right? So this is one big issue uh, that that hampers the implementation of distributed database systems, especially in relational database system environment. So the first is how to distribute the database. It could be you know replicated or non-replicated, fragmented or non-fragmented. You know the whole like full copy uh, replication or fragment replication. So these are questions you should ask while trying to design distributed databases. So these are main issues, main complications that come along with uh, distributed database systems. The other one is distributed query processing. Uh, once you design your distributed database, then you will have data replicated over the network, data fragmented over the network, right? So uh, you need to care about the query or the, the, the software, like the, the, the script that uh, is supposed to access all those replicated dispersed data, right? So in that, that perspective is referred to as, or is categorized under topic distributed query processing, okay? For instance, convert user transactions to data manipulation instructions. So there is this concept, we'll talk about that one, we'll, we'll, we'll We'll see the theory and the, pra the, 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 the practice uh, behind this one. Like you have to, you have to have some kind of relational calculus. You have to change the relational calculus to relational algebra. Then the relational algebra should be optimized in a way it is, you know, efficiently decomposed and distributed over the network. So there is also again beyond this distribution, there is a concept of optimization. So when we, call, when we talk about optimization, uh, you know, we, ref, we are referring uh, directly to the cost of data access, cost of data transmission, and cost of computation, right? So there are different cost computation uh, methods. Uh, we'll talk about this one, the, this one's uh, in our next classes. But in general, uh, distributed query processing is an NP hard uh, problem. So NP hard means non polynomial hard problem. It's type of among the types of uh, the hardest computer science or computational or mathematical, you know, problem. So it's very hard problem, but there there is you know, a tolerable degree of uh, solutions. We'll talk about that, that one uh, later because this is mainly you know the concept of load balancing, uh, data allocation, computational allocation. Uh, yeah, one thing I can tell you about this distributed query processing is it's a very complex task. It's even a task beyond scheduling. You know, scheduling is a very complex task by itself, but uh, query processing in a distributed environment is, is especially if you consider the, 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 the uh, concept of optimization, it's very uh, complex problem, but we'll see some theories behind uh, uh, addressing these problems. Um, the other one uh, is distributed concurrency control. Uh, so here in distributed environment, you are going to have multiple uh, databases with the same data, and you are going to have multiple users who might want to access the same data item at a time, okay? So how do you co synchronize concurrent access of data? You shouldn't, like, you are not supposed to say, for instance, as a database management system, as a distributed database management system, stop, X user is using this data, so you shouldn't, you shouldn't touch it. You should, that's, that's not the promise of uh, distributed database management system. Distributed database management system promises concurrency, data uh, access concurrency, computation concurrency. So for that purpose, achieving that concurrency is a big issue, okay, in the realm of distributed database management system. So, that's one thing you should consider, like deadlock management, for instance. Okay, achieving consistency in replicated uh, uh, data in, in, in an environment where there are uh, replicated data—that's also another problem. Uh, 
The other one is reliability. How do you make your system resilient to uh, failures? Because, uh, for instance, if you put your data item in two locations, in two sites, for instance, there is high degree of probability you might lose two, both of these uh, replicated data items at some point in time, okay? So, you know, in distributed database management system, you have to also care about the resilience of your uh, system in general. This is achieved, one, by implementing uh, a very good uh, distributed environment in which data is replicated as much as possible. The second one, by implementing distributed query processing techniques, which are really uh, robust enough to access alternative data sources whenever the target data source is down. And also there is a concept of atomicity and uh, durability. So uh, these are the issues of uh, distributed database management system, like replication. For instance, from the replication perspective, there is this concept called mutual consistency, uh, freshness of copies, eager versus lazy uh, uh, synchronization centralized versus distributed replication so this these are again issues like we can consider this these ones as uh, topics you should care about while uh, implementing or working on a distributed database environment okay for instance copies should be fresh always so there is no concept or you shouldn't be trying to use batch processes that run once a day to synchronize uh, differences between data items or sites. So if you have a principle to achieve freshness of copies, high degree of freshness of copies of data or replicated data, then the issue will uh, will be large. So you should care about that one too. If that is also similar to the eager way of uh, synchronizing your data, we call it eager mechanism, That which is uh, a way you uh, synchronously, you know, uh, propagate updates to all replicas in a given environment. There is also lazy uh, update mechanism or synchronization mechanism in which you synchronize uh, uh, data or updates in one site uh, in asynchronous manner, okay? Not in real time. The other one is parallel database management systems. Uh, this are different from distributed database management systems, but you should also care about parallel database management systems while working with distributed database management systems. This is basically, there is no concept of a geographically distributed, uh, uh, you know, uh, databases, but this is more to having multiple uh, database management systems that run parallelly, and uh, this mainly aligns with the concept of cluster computing, okay? So this has high scalability and performance, but it might also have its own, uh, its own, you know, from the performance perspective and scalability perspective, this is good. At least there is no communication latency or uh, complications related to network, but <clears throat> availability might be uh, one issue. Single point of failure might be another issue. So this is it. Uh, so another issue you should care about like is uh, you know, uh, alternative distribution approach like modern peer-to-peer, World Wide Web and other uh, uh, techniques, uh, big data processing techniques, for instance, MapReduce and Spark, you'll, you'll be working on this uh, as a seminar, NoSQL, NewSQL, Polystores, for instance, in my current project I have been using Polystores um, and some other NoSQL database systems. Okay, like DynamoDB, Cassandra, and MongoDB. So graph analytics techniques, uh, all up uh, kind of uh, techniques, you should, you should care about this one as a big data processing techniques. Uh, and these all are important if you are dealing with distributed database management systems because distributed database management systems in the first slide are characterized by heterogeneous, not necessarily heterogeneous, but you know, Usually they are heterogeneous. That means there are different database management systems in, this, in the same distributed database management system. There, there might be MongoDB, Neo4j, Cassandra, DynamoDB, Polystore, different 
data sources okay so for that purpose it's better to care about or pay attention to these all issues in general so the, the previous the preliminary like the previous issues are very related to distributed database management systems but this the later ones are alternative and very important too the last subtopic of this chapter is uh, the architecture of distributed database management system we discussed about this one but i will revise it uh, in uh, uh, you know pictorial manner or uh, figuratively this is an orthogonal uh, uh, description of uh, the database management system uh, implementation alternatives from centralized database management system to fully distributed uh, database management uh, system. Look, here we have DB1, I would say, DB1 distribution, okay, and degree zero autonomy, degree zero autonomy is here, um, and from the heterogeneity perspective, it's most of the time homogeneous, okay, that's what we call client server system. Uh, if you go to the same type of system, but with high degree of distribution, we call them parallel databases, NoSQL databases, NewSQL database management system. It's called the multi-database system. We discussed about this one uh, before. Heterogene heterogeneous, okay? Uh, but when we increase the degree of heterogeneity in a peer-to-peer -peer database management system, that database management system environment is called multi-database System. So it's very important diagram. You should you should you should read this one again. You should see this one again so that it gives you a clear picture of the difference between uh, client server, parallel, peer to peer, multi database, or federated database management uh, system. So this is a description of uh, uh, what I already discussed here. So client server architecture is uh, looks like this one since you are. Uh, I think you took uh, distributed computing, right? Am I wrong? I think you took you took no. computers. Yeah, I think you took yes. computers. So you should you should be familiar with this architecture, okay? But from the database perspective, uh, here we have in a client server architecture, we do have a database which stores the data. We have a system, an operating system in general. And from that operating system, we have uh, uh, another operating system from the client side. So this is from the server side. That is from the client side. From the client side, the operating system or the server, the database server system, accepts SQL queries and provides uh, result relation. Okay, sub relations or relations. So that's how client server architecture works. Uh, there are different advantages uh, of client server architecture. Division of labor, for instance, that's one common thing we talk about, common thing we mention when we talk about the advantages of uh, client server architecture. Uh, the possibility of horizontal and uh, vertical scaling of resources. We discussed about scaling, scale up and scale out, so that's what we call horizontal and vertical. Um, better price per performance on client machines, that's advantage. Uh, also, since client-server uh, architectures are uh, very popular ones, most used ones, we do have uh, uh, different tools, very familiar tools on client machines to access our servers. Um, data access is also via standard, so it's very easy. Um, yeah, so uh, database management system functionalities can be provided through client workstations and uh, from the price to performance ratio is also good. So this is actually subjective. I, I, I don't really want to teach this one as uh, a fact, you know. It's very dependent on the situation. So, but it's better to take uh, client server architecture as an architecture that operates like this. So database server generally looks like this one. We do have a client in between the client and an application server. This is the extension of what we discussed here. Between the client and the application server, we do have network, and uh, the application server might be in different places. By the way, so most of most of the time, if it is uh, a corporate uh, database system, for instance, this is true. Application server is somewhere else. Database server is another place in another place, and these servers are interrelated with uh, a network. And then the database might be different from. Uh, a place where the instance is stored, the database instance is stored.
network. So this is this is the general architecture of a database server. So, so when you extend this one, scale this one to distributed database server, we do have various clients which communicates with application servers over the network. And those application servers, again, are not in one-to-one -one relation with the database servers, but they interrelate with the database servers through a network that provides uh, some kind of transparency and connectivity. Then uh, data in general. But when we come to peer-to-peer -peer, uh, component architecture, so it's uh, most of the time this is uh, a, an autonomous system an autonomous system which can decide whether to share or not to share its uh, data so look in uh, there is this this is basically uh, per node level directory of the database or a directory or a metadata, a metadata that uh, uh, describes the nature of the data that is stored in a given site okay runtime support processor um, and then we have internal schema and conceptual schema and uh, every activity is logged in system so this is a very generic description of the data processor section of a peer-to-peer -peer component we have a user processor section which is responsible to accept user queries and provide uh, or respond back with some uh, responses so here we have user interface handlers, data controllers, global query optimizers, and distribution execution monitors with some global conceptual schema and external schema. Look, uh, this external schema, we call them auxiliary files. We'll talk about this one later in another chapter. But global conceptual schema and local conceptual schema has different purpose. Okay? Global conceptual schema is like, uh, you know, per, per overall uh, distributed database environment level. It knows where other components are located, but local conceptual schema is responsible to know where its own data items are located. Okay, that's uh, a different thing. We'll talk about how to distribute local conceptual, like uh, global conceptual schemas, how to how, how a database management system use this in uh, subsequent chapters. We discussed about this one. Uh, this is one of the architectures, the most enticing architectures of distributed database system, in which there is a multi-database system layer, and uh, the user accesses different distributed dispersed databases as one database because of this transparent, uh, this because of this module that provides transparent access to data. We call this multi-database system architecture. We have a mediator wrapper architecture, again, which is a distributed database uh, management system architecture, in which we have wrapper components that wraps uh, with the database management system. I'm sorry, that's cool. Anyway, I'm, I'm almost finishing. So, harmonize for each database, universal protocol, then the mediator request which in pipeline as a gadget is at all, mediator demo. Um, collaborate together again. User request which in the moment, wrapper the mo response which in the moment, user only has to act on. Malet no. So the last architecture, the cloud computing layer based on the architecture, MDVS layer based on the architecture, cloud on demand no bilanan, reliable no bilanan. Uh, as a service, no, we don't have to provide the architecture like infrastructure service. Uh, Database as a service, software as a service, platform as a service. Yeah, that. Here, yeah, cloud uh, simplified the architecture. No, uh, cluster of uh, computing nodes, cluster of uh, infrastructure. Yeah, a little bit. User edge through the cloud, transparent. Go on away. On demand, data as a service, infrastructure, platform, software, anything like. Buzu uh, some must have learning as a service. Buzu nager as a service. I miss but environment no matter which are statistic are you know it's a quarter so uh, that our route uh, topic uh, principles of distributed database systems one of the textbooks uh, chapter one lay i'll uh, uh, through the control